And what we're going to spend a bunch of time on now is looking at what heritability actually means. The heritability number, because it is completely different from the everyday intuition about what it means. And what it's usually telling you is how unimportant genes are in the deterministic way rather than the other way around. Okay, so what does everyone assume? What is heritability telling you? It is telling you how much do genes determine the average level of this trait. You have one version of a gene, and there's the other flavor, and they produce different average levels of some behavior or something at the end. What heritability is teaching you, if you've got this completely wrong notion, it's teaching you how much do genes have to do with the average level of that behavior, that trait, that whatever. That's not what heritability actually means. What heritability as a number is telling you is not what genes have to do with the average level of the trait, it's what genes have to do with the degree of variability around that average. Okay, this is a point where things immediately seem panicky and start getting very, very you know, complicated, all of that. We will see it's not that bad. And it's not that bad in a very critical way. Okay, so... Okay, simple first sense of getting at it. Here's two populations where you measure something or other. And these three individuals, they come in at 9, 10, 11. And these come in at 1, 10, and 19 or whatever. What's going on here? You average them. They have the exact same average. What's the difference? There's a lot more variability around the average here than in this case. What's the wrong idea that people have that heritability means? Ooh, it's telling you how much do genes determine the average here. That's not what it's doing. It's how much do genes determine how much variability there is. Initially, this seems like a very subtle point, and what's the big deal? Because at the end of the day, it's still talking about how important genes are. What we'll see now is it's actually a way of seeing how less deterministic genes are in lots of cases. Okay, so this heritability stuff talking about variance. Here we have an example. Okay, we've got some plant some plant with some gene that comes in three different flavors and you measure something or other about the plant. This is how much water it retains or the plant's IQ or something like that. You're measuring some trait and you're asking, does it differ as a function of which version of this gene you have? So you do your study and this is what you see. And you say, whoa, okay, I went and looked at this plant in a rainforest and we identify the genetic versions of it and Look, very different. The gene that you have there, knowing that, gives you a lot of predictive power over what level of whatever it is that you're measuring this plant is. That's great. So you're going to get your doctorate out of that, and you get some publications, and it's great, and you finally stop being a student, and it's terrific. And meanwhile, some individual who shares like none of your genes in common on the other side of the planet, we, meanwhile, there's some SOB who's studying the exact same plant in the middle of the Gobi Desert. You're sitting here in the Amazon studying this, and here's this individual doing the exact same kind of experiment, saying, oh, here we have this unlikely plant that grows both in the Amazon and the Gobi Desert, but here we have this, and we're studying this here, and what am I studying? I'm studying those three variants, those three variants of this gene, and I'm asking, do they influence plant IQ? The same thing that you were asking over here. And that individual was doing their study, and they see that, yes, indeed, the gene influences what version that you have. And here you got A, B, and C. And here's what they see when they measure plant IQ. And it looks like that. And what do they conclude? Whoa, look at that. Knowing what version of the gene you have gives me enormous predictive power in predicting what the plant IQ is going to be. And then, catastrophically, tragically, the two of you meet each other and discover that you're both researching the same plant and you look at your numbers and your, your heart breaks at that point because you look at these and what's going on here? 
what's going on? Let's translate this notion of heritability and variance and all of that. Let's translate it into a very simple question you can ask, translating all of this in English. You're interested in what this gene has to do with plant IQ. And you're allowed to find out one piece of information. You could know whether the plant has version A, B, or C, or you could know whether the plant is growing in the Amazon or the Gobi Desert. Which piece of information is going to give you more predictive power? And what you wind up seeing here is, if you can either know this or the environment, you want to know what the environment is. The variability, oh, plant IQ could come in at 98, 100, 102, 8, 10, and 12. The far more of the variability in those six numbers is explained by what environment it's going on in rather than the genetic difference. That's what heritability is telling you. And in a study like this, it would tell you that the heritability number is actually quite low because the amount of variation due to this is far less explained by the gene type than whether it's the Amazon or the Gobi Desert. OK, so that's a first pass at it. Why is this really important? For the following reason. You're a scientist, and you're trying to understand how A, B, and C influence plant IQ. And you come up with something nutty and stupid, like saying, well, I would like to be able to do field seasons in both the Amazon and the Gobi Desert. And your advisor will say, or all of your elders will say something like, no, you can't do that, because that's just you're not controlling for environment. You're not studying it in only one controlled environment. That's too many. You can't go to there. There's such different ecosystems, all of that. Pick one and go study it there. And what you do is you go study it there. And as a result of just studying it here, you come away thinking that virtually all of the variability is explained by genes. What have you just done? You explicitly have designed your experiment so that you can't detect the environmental role in determining that trait. What counts as setting up the experiment as the right way for people who think about this sort of thing, standard sort of approaches to experiments, what is, counts as doing a good job by definition, what you're doing is biasing towards thinking the genetic input is more important than it actually is. Because scientists don't decide to study this trait in two different places. You don't decide to do a study where you're looking at some trait in both rats and ocelots or something. You don't die to, you know, whatever. Look, pick one species, maybe even pick just one gender. Pick one environment. Don't have your rats in one room where the air conditioning is going nonstop, and the other room you're barbecuing stuff. Control for environment. And by definition, if you've done the nice, careful, responsible thing that a scientist is supposed to do, doing this sort of thing, you control for environment. What have you just done? You have just removed your ability to see the role of environment. And you have just artificially inflated how important you think the genes are. <laughs>